Space Shuttle Challenger blasts off on its 25th mission. At one minute and 15 seconds into its flight, there was an explosion in the heavens. And the sky caught fire as the shuttle exploded in fragments. Velocity 2,900 feet per second, altitude 9 nautical miles, downrange distance 7 nautical miles. All seven crew members on board are dead. Man's reach for the stars and the price we have to pay. Hello, I'm Richard Zachariah. We've almost become blasé to the wonder of the whole space shuttle operation. This morning, while much of the world slept, seven people died on what should have been a routine flight around the planet. On 11am today, we'll bring you the fullest coverage of this tragedy, something that really has been an explosion heard around the world. Six, we have main engine start, four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. For commentator Richard Coby and his NASA colleagues, this looked to be a flawless repeat of the 24 previous shuttle missions from Kennedy Space Center. But one minute and 30 seconds after liftoff, not even NASA officials could fathom what went wrong. The NASA commentary continued. Velocity 2,900 feet per second, altitude 9 nautical miles, downrange distance 7 nautical miles. For the crowd gathered at Kennedy Space Center, there was the elation of witnessing the stunning launch, then the realization that something terrible had gone wrong. <laughs> As silence descended on the Kennedy and Johnson Space Centers as NASA scrambled to both accept and explain what had happened. Thanks to the perfect weather over Florida, the best clue as to the cause of the explosion came from slow motion replays of the tragedy. Even they showed little more than a sudden flame between the shuttle and its external fuel tank. Before, in an instant, Challenger disappeared in a ball of flame. Fragments of the wreckage showered into the Atlantic Ocean for more than 15 minutes, prohibiting rescue ships from entering the area. It took four hours before NASA could offer any comment. I am aware and have seen the media is showing footage of the launch today from the NASA Select System. We will not speculate as to the specific cause of the explosion based on that footage. It will take all the data, careful review of that data, before we can draw any conclusions on this national tragedy. NASA announced the formation of a board of inquiry and that all data available on the explosion would be impounded until the board has completed its investigation. The question asked throughout the United States was how would the Challenger tragedy affect the shuttle program? Was it simply too dangerous? But President Reagan, who was to have given his State of the Union address tonight, took to national television here to assure all Americans that shuttle flights would continue. Today is a day for mourning and remembering. Nancy and I are pained to the core by the tragedy of the shuttle Challenger. We know we share this pain with all of the people of our country. This is truly a national loss. Amongst the crew members killed, Commander Dick Scobie, Michael Smith, Judy Resnick, Ronald McNair, Ellison Onizuka, Gregory Jarvis, and America's first citizen in space, teacher Krista McAuliffe, who was known well to Americans as Mark O'Brien reports. Krista McAuliffe, the 37-year-old mother of two, became a national heroine when she was selected from 1,100 teachers to become the first citizen in space. She said one of the most difficult aspects of the program was the separation from her husband Steve and children, nine-year-old Scott and six-year-old Carolyn. Love you. All right, see you later, alligator. Okay, let's get dinner ready. The McAuliffe family had been the focus of publicity during the four-and-a-half-months training course which Krista underwent. He's doing a super job. I mean, he took over single parenting. 
without missing a beat. The kids are doing well. He's doing well. I mean, he's doing so well. When I came home the last time, I walked in the kitchen to do something, and he kind of looked, and he said, excuse me. He said, we don't do that that way anymore. I said, pardon me. <laughs> They do have the ability um, to have contingencies. Um, there, there are plans in case there's a problem. And, and also the, the thought that, th I think I'm going to be up on Challenger's 10th mission. And um, that just to think that the shuttle is, has gone, I mean, 10 times. I mean, that's an exciting thing. And uh, no, I, I, I think it's a, a very safe program. <laughs> At the launch pad, Krista's parents watched the lift off, but their joy quickly turned to confusion. They stared into the sky, trying to see the Challenger, but realised something had gone wrong. A few moments later, a NASA official made his way to the couple to tell them that their daughter's flight had exploded. Krista McAuliffe was selected by President Reagan for the shuttle flight after her application stated she hoped to demystify NASA and space. The teacher wanted her trip to humanise the technology of the space age. As part of the Teacher in Space program, Krista was to have conducted two classes in flight to be linked by satellite to her old school. The students at the school in Concord, New Hampshire joined in the countdown and cheered the spacecraft on its way. But it soon became clear that something was terribly wrong. The school children were ordered back to the class and began to return in shock disbelief. The joy had turned to an unforgettable grief for the students and the nation. Now that the Super Bowl is over, I can really say, welcome back. And Chip, I suspect the results were not all that you would have liked. It was like the first year of your term, Mr. <laughs> but at 11.40, when the president received the news, the upbeat mood changed. Mr. Reagan watched the television replays horrified. He told reporters he was shocked and saddened, but that the State of the Union speech would go on. You can't stop governing the nation, he said. But within an hour, that had changed. The pictures were too horrible. The shocked reactions from families and school children too emotional. The president feels that these same emotions are being experienced by people all over this nation at this moment. Uh, and with the con consultation of Congress that's taken place in the last hour or so, the president thought it was entirely appropriate that uh, his State of the Union uh, be deferred. So the speech was postponed until next Tuesday night, leaving time for reflection and also the first assessments of the space program's future. Well, it's going to have an adverse uh, impact upon the whole space program. Uh, there may be delays that can uh, go on for, for as much as a year with regard to future uh, shuttle launches. The president seemed to reflect the majority view of what's ahead. I know it's hard to understand, but sometimes painful things like this happen. It's all part of the process of exploration and discovery. It's all part of taking a chance and expanding man's horizons. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. The Challenger crew was pulling us into the future, and we'll continue to follow. In classrooms around the country today, with someone from the classroom world lifting off, it was as if they all were. What are you feeling oh my right goodness. now? What are you feeling? Goosebumps all over. Yeah. James Rowley was a semi-finalist in NASA's Teacher in Space selection. We have a report from the Black Dynamics officer that the vehicle has exploded. My director confirms that we are uh, looking at uh, Checking with the recovery forces to see uh, what can be done at this point. Can we, can we get the cameras? Brought in for the New Age's first formal classroom lessons from outer space, our children were suddenly taught instead the old lessons of mortality. Of the real risk which gives any victories their meaning. Well, I was really amazed to see it because I never thought um, explosion would really ever happen. I was pretty scared because I thought it could have been my science teacher that was going to be hurt in it. A finalist in the teacher selection. It's something that will take a long time for people to get over, but I really feel that it's worth every effort to continue the space program. Hey, space shuttle explode. Get it right now. In the streets and stores across America today, that same feeling in the gut we had known before. Well, I think it's very tragic. I think it's the most tragic thing since the death of Kennedy himself. I got the same sick kind of feeling that I 
used to get when I was in Vietnam. Just a just a horrible feeling. That feeling that you get, that cold feeling all over that only happens maybe five times in your lifetime. When... We were all set up for it, watching this shuttle flight especially, because this time the space age was really going to begin. One of us was going, not just a teacher, but a mother, a private citizen, your neighbor. That's very upset. After all that about Christy McAuliffe, it's almost as if you know her. Today, in the United States military and scientific communities which built the space program, the professionals tried to handle their losses. The uh, NASA public affairs officer with us was in tears because he had worked with these people. <clears throat> and uh, it is very close and we're all feeling it. And I really find it very hard to talk about it. People are kind of uh, numb, just uh, shocked. One of the first, Chuck Yeager, who conquered the sound barrier. You don't give an awful lot of thought to it because, number one, you can't do anything about it when it happens. A memorial flame was lit in the Los Angeles Olympic Stadium. Our national space effort lost innocence. The challengers learned of death. We will travel in space, but now none of us will take it for granted. explore the universe and discover its truths. They wished to serve, and they did. The Challenger crew was pulling us into the future, and we'll continue to follow them. What caused that explosion? But as I say, NASA was uh, not terribly forthcoming. In fact, they were stonewalling on occasions in the face of some pretty ludicrous uh, speculation. We had stories uh, floating around here and uh, questions being asked about uh, Soviet laser beams knocking the shuttle out of the sky. We had uh, stories about on-ground sabotage. And uh, as a result, uh, NASA, as I say, was doing a little bit of uh, stonewalling on, on that basis. News of Challenger's explosion Tuesday sent a paralyzing chill across America. Hundreds of people were on hand at Kennedy Space Center to witness the flight. But what they saw horrified and stunned them. I regret that I have to report that based on very preliminary searches of the ocean where the Challenger impacted this morning, these searches have not revealed any evidence that the crew of Challenger survived. Space flights have seemingly become routine, and most Americans take their safety for granted. No one likes to think that something could actually go wrong. I think it was always in the back of everybody's mind that it might happen sometime, but I don't think we expected it. NASA, of course, has always been concerned about safety, but even when it comes to possibly saving a life, there are limits. You cannot build uh, a protective system that would keep the crew from you know being uh, incapacitated uh, in an accident like that. if you do then it would be so heavy you couldn't get it off the ground and it would cut into your payload still knowing the risk doesn't make a tragedy like this any easier to accept especially to one of the astronauts brothers we're not holding up well at all as you might expect uh, our feelings uh, are mixed he remembers his brother like this that's a whole bunch of memories. That's a bad question. <laughs> uh, he liked to fly airplanes. His whole life was flying, and, uh, and I guess that's what I'll remember. It was his love of, of flying and other space probes. 30 hours of search and recovery, and they're getting results. Shawling the seas and returning to the port at Cape Canaveral a combined services operation coordinated by NASA and the local Coast Guard. If the answers are at sea, they've promised to find them. Some of the debris has been coming ashore by itself, washed in from an area 120 miles long, 60 wide. The smaller pieces may take weeks to test conclusively. Meanwhile, NASA officials say they're looking for as much as they can. Of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. Video showed the explosion of Challenger in excruciating detail, but it did not initially reveal the cause. 
the explosion came a little more than a minute after launch, at a point where one of the shuttle's two solid rocket boosters attached to the ship. And those boosters, which trouble some scientists, will be closely examined in the investigation underway. There have been several flights where there was evidence of the nozzle being within a hair's breadth of failure, and these were in some recent flights. Uh, another problem has been oscillations in the gas flow in the rocket motors. This is a very common problem in solid rockets. And the amplitudes of these uh, oscillations have been getting larger in some of the more recent flights, and there, there is cause for concern. The first visible sign of a problem was the explosion itself. But slow motion replays of the final seconds of flight show what appears to be a fire burning between Challenger and its volatile external fuel tank. A fuel line from that tank to the shuttle to power its three main engines runs along the underside of the space shuttle. Less than a second later, after the fire appeared, it seemed to trigger a huge fireball that enveloped the entire ship. All that remained were two solid rocket boosters careening out of control back to Earth. The core of fuel inside. About the only shuttle component not designed to be reused is the giant gas tank, whose prime contractor is Martin Marietta. With its load of highly volatile liquid hydrogen and oxygen, it fueled the major explosion, and its ultra-thin aluminum skin is an obvious center of speculation. Similar lightweight tanks have flown without mishap on 17 previous missions, but the questions to Martin Marietta are these. Was there a leak in the tank or in one of the lines feeding the engines? Could the surface have been punctured by anything, including an icicle on the pad? Or might one of the struts holding the tank to the shuttle itself have weakened, damaging the fragile skin? Finally, the shuttle and all its parts, including the launch pad, are serviced by Lockheed. They were responsible for keeping the delicate machinery free of the ice that built up around the complex. In view of their decidedly awkward performance in the routine task of removing a screw from the shuttle door on Monday, their overall job needs to be examined. Question to Lockheed. Was the shuttle maintained up to standard? And specifically, was the ice on the pad a factor? As they arrived for work at sunrise this morning, many of NASA's 10,000 employees and contract workers were solemn and quiet. They are the citizens of a vast space city outside Houston, a cluster of communities plunged into gloom. Mission Commander Francis Scobie lived here on Brook Point Road. Today, friends and neighbors visited with food and flowers. And all across town, to remember the fallen, churches rang bells at the exact moment 24 hours after the explosion. On the streets, drivers turned on their headlights to express sorrow. This tragedy is so personal. Personal, and yet bigger than that. Bigger to a community with its past and present tied so closely to the exploration and exploitation of space. Late this afternoon, NASA released photos of shock and surprise on the faces of mission controllers in the moments after the explosion. At a press conference today, the man in the picture, Flight Director Jay Green, fought back tears. And we train under every scenario that, that we could possibly imagine. Uh, there was nothing anybody could have done for this one. It just stopped. Meanwhile, flowers were pouring into the space center in condolence, and America's space city was holding on in the hours of its biggest loss. In 1961, on the second Mercury mission, Gus Grissom nearly drowned. His capsule was lost in the ocean. John Glenn, the first American to orbit the Earth, didn't know in 1962 if he'd make it back alive. Godspeed, John Glenn. Signals indicated his protective heat shield might be loose. Fortunately, it wasn't. Five years later, three American astronauts did die, not in flight, but in a launch pad fire during a test of their Apollo cabin. After the deaths of Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee, NASA completely reworked the Apollo spacecraft to make it safer. Despite that, an oxygen tank explosion crippled Apollo 13 on its way to the moon. The three astronauts on board nearly didn't make it back. Apollo spacecraft at least had escape rockets to pull the astronauts to safety during a liftoff crisis. Ironically, the first shuttle had ejection seats for its crew. Experts believed that they wouldn't have saved any lives and they were taken out. The space agency hoped that its remaining built-in safety systems would protect shuttle astronauts. And in two heart-stopping launch pad shutdowns like this... We have an RSLS abort. We have an abort. 
and an engine failure last year they did until now. In the future, as in the past, our freedom, independence, and national well-being will be tied to new achievements, new discoveries, and pushing back new frontiers. We must never forget that the benefits we receive are due to our country's commitment made a decade ago to remain the world leader in space technology. We'll continue our quest in space. There will be more shuttle flights and more shuttle crews. And yes, more volunteers, more civilians, more teachers in space. Nothing ends here. Our hopes and our journeys continue. For five days now, NASA investigators have been painstakingly studying impounded photographs, videotapes, and all flight data from Challenger's one minute and 15 second ascent to disaster. Tonight, the investigating board released videotape and photographs, which clearly indicates the possibility of a fuel leak. NASA calls it a plume on one of the shuttle's solid rocket boosters. The videotape and the still photo frames uh, show an unusual plume on the right-hand SRB, which is under investigation. Officials will not comment on the cause or the effect of the fuel leak, but sources close to their investigation have told ABC News' Jules Bergman that Challenger's explosion is believed to have been ignited by the rupture of a seam within the rocket booster on Challenger's right side. Flames shot directly at the shuttle's external fuel tank, sources say, and nine seconds later, Challenger erupted in a massive fireball. NASA says investigators must examine thousands more pictures before they draw any conclusions. At Cape Canaveral, this was a day of bidding farewell. A memorial wreath was flown over the Space Center and the shuttle's launch pad. At 11.39, the exact time the Challenger disappeared from the skies, the wreath was cast to sea, a final tribute to the fallen heroes. The president's mandate to his commission was direct. Find out what caused the accident and prevent it from happening again. Mr. Reagan said the Challenger crew believed in the space program. We owe it to them to conduct this investigation so that future space travelers can approach the conquest of space with confidence and America can go forward with enthusiasm and optimism which has sparked and marked all of our great undertakings. The commission chairman, former Secretary of State William Rogers, the vice chairman, Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon. Others on the panel, former test pilot Chuck Yeager, and first American woman in space, Sally Ride. After a 1967 accident that killed three astronauts, Lyndon Johnson let NASA investigate. But ever since Mr. Reagan saw last week's tragedy, aides have said the public would have more confidence in an independent probe. The panel chairman said his relationship with NASA will not be hostile, but... Uh, I don't anticipate, once we get started, that there'll be... Uh, question about our impartiality or our willingness to uh, follow any path no matter where it leads. But officials say privately the presidential panel is largely public relations, that there is no doubt about NASA's integrity, and the space agency was going to name many of the same people to its panel. I, Former I, astronaut I, Armstrong indicated he didn't see the need for an independent probe. I would not have uh, doubts about uh, NASA being honestly able to uh, conduct such an investigation. Officials here considered having the panel examine broader questions also about the future of the manned space program. But they limited the probe because the president had already set his policy to keep flying the shuttle. America first went into space with the Explorer 1 satellite, the size of a grapefruit. That was in 1958. Since then, we've been to the moon and beyond. There we go. Yes. The U.S. landed a robot spacecraft on Mars and swept toward the outer reaches of the solar system, expanding the frontiers of science. At least two of the major purposes and benefits of the space program are international prestige and the psychological payoff within the country. That really looks super. Perhaps the most tangible benefit is the satellite industry, which made global communications possible without a vast network of wires. 
By picking up light and heat waves from Earth, satellites have also revolutionized the exploration of natural resources. The requirement that equipment for spacecraft be small and lightweight ultimately led to the personal computer and medical advances as well. The valve in this implantable device, which lets cancer patients receive chemotherapy without side effects, is the same kind of tiny valve used in testing Martian soil. There it is! Lightweight tennis rackets are one of the spin-offs making life more fun or easier. Others include freeze-dried food, video cassette recorders, digital watches. So much of what we take for granted today comes from space technology. Many people wrongly credit NASA for coming up with Velcro and Teflon. They were invented before the space program began. Some of the benefits are completely uh, non-quantifiable. You can't determine exactly what they are. To date, America's civilian space program has cost almost $100 billion and 14 lives. Seven aboard Challenger, three in a space pad fire in 1967, four more in training accidents. Despite broad public support, questions are being raised about whether the benefits are worth the cost. All it's known is they continue to focus on the rocket booster, which videotapes reveal had a leak, one that appeared to be near a seam or join. As they examine how it got there, two revelations. Such leaks have occurred before. We had some problems, some minor leakage of the seals on one or two flights, uh, but it was resolved to everybody's satisfaction. And as late as last November, the contractor which assembles and fuels them was criticized for its unskilled handling of the rockets. NASA indicates it's confident enough rocket remains will be found to pinpoint what went wrong. A split second after launch, a puff of smoke is seen. Investigators consider that's the rubber rocket seals burning. The joints then appear to seal. The flight could succeed. But at 59 seconds, the seals open again, causing stress. At 72 seconds, the stress breaks a strut holding the booster rocket. That booster then swings into the main fuel tank, and the shuttle explodes. Revelation of the investigators' theory came today as one of the astronauts' parents spoke for the first time of the tragedy. Judy Resnick's father says no one was to blame for what happened. It was an accident. I feel that NASA as a whole took enough precautions that uh, there shouldn't have been an accident like this. It just happens that this was, there's no backup for this type of a system and uh, it just has to happen one time and it did. But in Concord, New Hampshire, home of space teacher Krista McAuliffe, there's a different view. I think they sent it up with their fingers crossed. Uh, I don't think there be, should be hell for murder, but uh, if it was your kin, how would you feel? McAuliffe's parents, who witnessed the shuttle horror, have so far made no public comment. There are reports they may take legal action against NASA. In the United States, John Wiseman... I ...loaded with sophisticated sonar equipment, pinpointed the crew compartment late Friday, but weren't entirely sure what they'd found. The debris was located 40 kilometres east of Cape Canaveral in about 30 metres of water. At the weekend, a Navy vessel, the USS Preserver, steamed to the fine and sent down teams of divers to make a positive identification. All NASA will now say is they were able to identify debris of the shuttle cabin and that the divers did find remains of members of the shuttle crew. Beyond that, it's refusing comment. Family members of the Challenger crew were informed in deference to family wishes, NASA will not make further comment until recovery operations and identification are complete. Am I glad they found the bodies? Yes, I am. Why? <laughs> I think because uh, just to know that I never did like the thought of them being blown to pieces. I, I like to, you know, I like to have had some something I don't know it's kind of hard to explain um, but some tangible proof you know that that they were somewhere anyway in the weeks since the launch disaster large pieces of the spacecraft have been found surprising NASA officials the intensity of the blast which destroyed the shuttle was such that many experts thought only small parts would be recovered. 
and that finding the astronauts' remains was not even a possibility. Medical experts from the US Armed Services have been assigned the task of recovering the astronauts' remains. NASA says that will take several days, depending on weather conditions. ...found, but an official announcement did not come until late today. When the explosion happened, it seemed so totally devastating that experts questioned whether any sizable pieces would survive at all. The explosion was compared to a small nuclear detonation, but several large pieces have been found and taken to Cape Kennedy, where they've been laid out for investigation. A small armada of ships is now in the area, including the USS Preserver, which launched the small sonar device which located the debris. As for specifics, NASA has refused to comment on what remains of crew members have been found and just how much of the crew compartment is intact. Of Challenger's right side booster rocket ignited the fuel in the ship's giant external tank. Moments later, tracking radar detected 14 large pieces falling into the ocean. Subsequently, many subs working 400 meters under the surface found pieces of the suspect booster rocket. There has been a lot of speculation these past few weeks about the search for the crew compartment, but NASA refused comment, even after one television network acquired this photo of a recovered helmet, a helmet of the type worn by the astronauts. And while today has brought the announcement that the crew quarters have been found, NASA says tonight it will have nothing else to report until the recovery and astronaut identifications are complete. Three, Columbia, the last two, shuttle to lift off one. successfully, we faced problems ignition. potentially as catastrophic as the explosion that destroyed Challenger. ABC News has obtained an internal NASA memo written two weeks before the Challenger accident by the shuttle program's number two man, Arnold Aldrich. He documents a number of operations, efficiency, and safety issues related to the launch of Columbia on January 11th, a launch that took place after an unprecedented seven delays. During an attempt on January 6th, a console operator at the Cape inadvertently opened a valve on the external tank and wound up draining some 18,000 pounds of liquid oxygen out of the tank. The shuttle didn't launch for other reasons, and it was not until later that the lack of liquid oxygen was discovered. But had mission managers elected to launch without knowing about the propellant shortage, Columbia's engines would have shut down early and kept the shuttle from reaching proper orbit. Another potentially more hazardous situation occurred after a second launch abort. While processing the shuttle, technicians discovered that a temperature probe, shaped like a nail, had broken loose because of an inadequate weld and lodged in a valve leading to the main engine. No sensors detected it. Had Columbia launched with that probe there, the engine might have blown up eight minutes later when it tried to shut down. And wind up costing NASA orbiters and killing flight crews. Shuttle astronaut Gordon Fullerton today publicly confirmed those fears. Yes, uh, his concerns are, represent uh, the uh, office nearly unanimously. Meantime, a congressional hearing in Washington was told the replacement value of a new shuttle would be close NASA to $3 billion. Hundreds of NASA workers cheered as Discovery was pulled along. It was like a ticker tape parade for a long lost hero. Indeed, Discovery had been away a long time. For the past 600 days, the shuttle has been undergoing more than 200 modifications. Moving to the vehicle assembly building is a major milestone in NASA's effort to return to flight. Inside the VAB, Discovery will now be mated to the external tank and solid rocket boosters. Tuesday's event was delayed several times as engineers checked and rechecked the mounds of paperwork, ensuring that all work had been done and Discovery was 100% ready to go. That orbiter is in great shape. We don't know anything that uh, we're concerned about on it. Uh, it's uh, the best workmanship I think that anyone could possibly ask for. We've looked at all the flight records and uh, we feel very good about it. We're definitely on the way to the pad, John. During their final inspection of the vehicle, engineers found a loose nut on the nose wheel landing gear mechanism. That problem took several hours to correct. For two and a half years since the Challenger disaster, NASA has been battling to make the shuttle as safe as humanly possible. Discovery has been examined and re-examined. The fuel line that leaked a few days ago was fixed. The shuttle seemed as ready as it could ever be for its main engine test firing. And everything went smoothly at dawn until the final seconds of the countdown. Start seven. We have, uh, we have, we have a cutoff. We have cutoff of the uh, of the start sequence.
A valve in one of the three main engines had failed to close properly and a computer had stopped the test. NASA engineers appeared weary but determined. There's a certain amount of frustration because we thrive on doing things completely and getting them done. Things don't work as well, you know, it's just a challenge. The immediate task is to try the main engine test firing again, but that couldn't be arranged before Sunday.